Good afternoon, everybody. This is Vince Gans Gansberg. Welcome to Match Day and our special guest um, uh, this afternoon is Dr. Fritz Edel. Uh, Fritz is the Assistant Professor of, of Human Movement and Health Science Education. That's a mouthful for me um, <laughs> to say, but uh, uh, Fritz is um, a young man that uh, actually I coached against when he was in high school. So yes, I'm that old. Um, but <laughs> Uh, for the most part, um, he wants to make this kind of interactive. He's going to talk about kind of creating your own soccer, how you can share with your players uh, at, at all ages, how you can kind of create your own soccer combine at home. And uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to Dr. Uh, Dr. Edel. And again, thank you so much for taking time to be here. Thanks, Vince. <laughs> Coach Vince. Uh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> so... Uh, here we go. I'm going to share my screen here and um, I got this quick presentation. We don't have much time. So uh, Vince asked me if I want to take part in this. Hey, what can we do while we're sort of stuck at home and <laughs> what kind of virtual training can we get involved in? And so I just so happen to be teaching a strength and conditioning class at Butler University right now. It's a one credit class and I have to be creative about making the most out of really limited resources because I myself don't have any training equipment at home other than a ball and some stuff in my backyard that is not meant for training. So we decided to come up with a, a quick slideshow here to give you some resources to help you out. Uh, we came up with the acronym STUCK, Strength Training Under Quarantine. So we thought that was memorable. And <laughs> we don't want to end up like our friend the rat here in the, um, in the manhole. Oh. We don't want to gain oh. too much weight and, and get stuck there like that poor guy. Ooh. So here's our agenda. First, we want to be in, we're going to look about uh, look at real quickly how to identify your audience, which you should know how to do. Uh, decide what's worth doing after looking at your audience. Um, basic rules to follow. And then I've got a few resources that I think might be helpful for you that you can look at on your own. Um, first of all, let's just move right into it. Who is your audience? Well, to follow, sort of be in alignment with United Soccer Coaches, we have the, the 8 and under group, the 9 to 12, and the 13 and up competitive Obviously, training on your own, you want to have different approaches for each of these groups. Um, eight and under, you're probably not going to go hardcore with strength and conditioning training. Um, we'll have some basic rules to follow regarding this. So these are the groups. You can find um, how they categorize a 4v4, 7v7, 9v9, 11v11 on the United Soccer Coaches website. Uh, so we'll just keep going. <laughs> First so thing by, the, by the way, sorry, sorry, yeah, uh, no, go sorry Fritz. Uh, anybody, if anyone has any questions uh, during this presentation, there is the chat feature. So please just go ahead and uh, ask a question and we'll try and get to as many as we can here at the end. I'll have a question here for all of you in, in a little bit. So thanks, Fritz. So uh, please yeah, continue. No yeah, thanks. Um, and yeah, keep the questions coming in. So the, the, <laughs> the, the, first, the first question is what's worth doing and, and think about the big picture. We could be stuck for quite a while. So some basic rules to live by are what's fun, meaningful, and sustainable. So being really intentional about doing your best to keep it fun, especially if you've got the younger age groups. What kind of, what kind of games or challenges or mini virtual competitions can you help them engage in um, while they're stuck at home? Some of them might have brothers and sisters where they can get involved with, and some of them might not. Uh, the next thing is is being meaningful, and this is something that um, this is a, this is sort of a um, at the heart of what I try to do, just as a teacher of any sort. And that means at certain levels, the hard work isn't always fun, but it can be meaningful if everybody's doing it together, and, and there's sort of a an, uh, uh, a culture of togetherness where people are willing to to work hard when they're together, and now when they're alone or by themselves. So what, you know, how can we take that fun aspect and turn it into something competitive and, and really more intense and, and really meaningful? And then what's going to what's gonna have staying power? How do we make it sustainable and um, make sure that our athletes are staying interested and motivated? So that might mean we have to change it up a little bit. That might mean we have to talk to them more and find out what they like doing and what they enjoy doing and help empower them a little bit, give them some voice and choice. Um, in these activities, because a lot of times what they might come up with could be, you know, way more difficult than what maybe you would have had them do. So that's the sustainable piece. 
let's go to the next slide. So we talked about how part of that's meaningful and fun aspect. How can you create maybe a competitive natured soccer combine that can be done in the backyard? Um, and so we're going to ask you all to chime in on this. But the, the three things we came up with were maybe like, how do we come up with skills based events that are um, that are that that everybody can do that's maybe a little bit different than just working with the ball that's a little bit more focused um some fitness and performance based events i put some examples down there i stole a little bit from the football combine i think some of these come from the soccer combine as well um and then some ideas about data you can collect and maybe put on a on a shared spreadsheet using google docs or google forms where your athletes can compete with each other virtually maybe take videos of each other and on the video when they're doing a sprint, maybe they can, they can actually do the timing with a partner. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. So here's an opportunity for you all to use a chat feature um, uh, or yeah, the chat feature, I guess. What are some, like, let's brainstorm. Let's take about 30 seconds to brainstorm yeah. and plug in some ideas you have about what could count as skills-based events or fitness events and what data you could collect to, um, to help measure these things over time. No, it's great. Um, I, so I posted the question in uh, the chat box. We'll see if anybody <laughs> chats back uh, or answers back. I do have a question. Uh, uh, someone's asking, they would love to borrow your stuck um, analogy. Um, uh, and are you okay with that? Right. So do you want credit or are you rather them not use it? Are you okay with, with them? You doing can use that? it, but I invented it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, do so, your thing. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Use it all you want. <laughs> hey, so we're getting a few. Um, we so we got a shuttle activity. Uh, I I put in there. I don't know, Fritz, if you can see. I put in what events can you come up with? Um, so there's a shuttle activity, um, a faint challenge. Uh, it says that's from Zubin. Um, multi-directional. Uh, Andrew says juggling. Uh, nice. Ian says relay race ideas. Uh, Harry right. says, yeah. Harry says maybe some sort of juggling challenge where you have to use two different parts of your body. Oh yeah. Um, I like that. I think yeah. Harry's one of my ex players there. If that's Harry Runcie. Ah, very good. And then, uh, Catherine, good goalie. Catherine right. says two cone footwork. I, if it's the same Catherine, I think it's the goalkeeper, Catherine. So that would be, uh, appropriate from her, but I'm not sure. Awesome. Familiar uh, name. This is great. Yeah. Okay. Is, um, should we move on or should well, let's, let's, oh, it says it is not. Sorry, Catherine. Um, Zubin said hit plyometric activities. Um, uh, and then, oh, interesting from Jeff. He says can, positional based events. So like goalkeeper, defenders, midfielders, and forwards. And I don't know if, if I said this at the beginning, but, but Fritz was a fantastic player. Um, he got, he got the opportunity to go to play division one. Um, but he had an experience with that and he ended up, uh, not staying there, but but he had the opportunity uh, to do that. So, um, but uh, oh, and Harry says yes, that is me, and he misses you. So <laughs> let's right. go ahead and continue. I miss you too, Harry. All right, so <laughs> let's go on to the next one. So here's an idea. I started to put together just a quick little spreadsheet of what it could look like to track this sort of stuff. So if you see here, I just have like day one, and as we know on these on these Excel docs and these spreadsheets, you could have the different tabs at the bottom, so you could have a series of days line up within uh, within one document here. Um, and these are the events that sort of we we talked about before. Um, I threw in some times there, and if you see after it says day one, it says the goal is not only compete with each other but yourselves as well. But really, what we want to see over time, and and what can help for sustainability is finding the improvements, really emphasizing the improvement. The competition with each other is good, but sometimes as coaches, we get a pretty good idea who's going to quote unquote win these things more often than not. Hmm. Um, so it's important that we don't just praise them for winning, but for actually improving over time as well. No matter how, no matter where they start, they should always be improving. That's the goal. So if we look, we got a, you know, just a four person roster right here. Looks like Vince is on top in, in front of the whole pack. That's uh, the Felipe's fastest I've ever run, <laughs> ever. Felipe's bringing up the rear. Uh, oh. and, uh, I, I'm, I'm a close second to last, next <laughs> second behind Vince. Um, so can I ask you here? So you basically yeah. you create a, a Google spreadsheet. You call it home training. Now, the so how do you get this? How do you 
get this out to the kids and then how do the kids do this and report it? Great question. So you could share this with all of them and you could have them self-report. Um, I, I suppose it's up to you how you want to do it. That's how I would do it. I would trust okay. them to self-report. Yep. Um, you could have them do a buddy system where they mm -hmm. watch each other's videos and then the buddy reports for the other person. Um, and you could also have them just report to you and then you go ahead and fill it up. That would take the most time. That's not what I would do. Right. Um, but that's certainly a way to do it. Yeah. So real quick, um, Catherine has a question. What age yeah. group would this be ideal for? And I, I think when we talked and we were developing in the, this idea was we, we could do it with all ages, right? Eight to sure. eight year, seven year old kids to 23 year old college players. Right. Right. You, I think you could. I, what I would be, be careful. What would you vary? Yeah. What, what would you I would be, be careful of, of is what I'm emphasizing with the younger kids and what events are chosen. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. So asking a seven or eight year old to time themselves in a 20 by 20 or a bunch yeah. of 40 or um, that type of thing, and then to go ahead and, and um, add their own results, I, I don't think that that's going to be per particularly fun and sustainable. Right. Uh, so what would be for them, in your opinion? Um, I think that maybe you could, what I would probably do is figure out a game that we, that you know that they like and, and challenge them, maybe like a juggling type of game. Okay. And or or like, toe touches maybe, or. Yeah. So like the, the, the five, the five juggle club, the 10 juggle club, the, and, okay. you know, incrementally raise the, the, the level of um, challenge. Yeah. To motivate them to go out and hit the, you know, be a member of those clubs or whatever. Yeah, awesome. Maybe That's, maybe yeah. mail them stickers or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it, it kind of goes along with uh, a little bit what we did with um, uh, Samantha this morning with her X Factor program. For those that uh, that uh, uh, saw that one, Zubin said it would be great to add an element of psychosocial activity as well, um, which is very good. Yeah, getting them to like write it write in a journal or drawing per yeah um Absolutely. and jeff and jeff said younger kids might love obstacle courses too right so obstacle course type stuff yeah absolutely yep you could definitely do that you could set up something you know be considerate of what kind of um the context that the kids are in some kids might have a backyard some kids might not they might have to go into the street so just to, the more you know about where the kids are and what their situation is the easier it'll be to kind of determine what's appropriate yeah, and then with the psych, with the the social emotional or psychosocial stuff, I've got I've got another place where that can go as well as you get to the older groups with strength and conditioning. Yeah, you that's good. Go next slide. Yeah, yeah, because you, what Zubin's question or Zubin's comment, you I think you might be answering it here in a little bit. So about what op, like obstacles with household objects would be even more fun. So I think we talked about that too. So yeah, let's go on. All right, cool. All right, so if you get into the, um, you can do this. I'd say starting at 10 or 11 if you want to do some some strength and strength movement principles here uh the this is how i tend to categorize anything i do in strength and conditioning especially just a real basic approach to it so you want to have a lower body hip dominant upper body push lower body knee upper body pull and core movements and just about i'd say you know, whenever you're going to, you're going to be lifting, especially for soccer, or I shouldn't say lifting, I should say anything in resistance training. So I provided some examples of um, what these different movements can, um, can consist of. So the deadlift variations, glute bridge, that's all going to be hip. Anything where you're in sort of a squat position is going to be um, a lower body knee. Mm -hmm. We know that mm -hmm. upper body pushing is push-ups and bench press and military press oriented. Uh, upper body pull, anything with a row or pull up, chin up, anything like that will work. Uh, and then we know a, a whole bunch of different core variations that can work. Now, the trick is if you have, if you have a bunch of athletes that are at home that have no strength training equipment, you have to be creative with this. And I've been, um, with the strength and conditioning class that I'm now teaching online at Butler, I've had to do all kinds of wild things. <laughs> so, um, Hold on, where am I? Oh, I'll, I'll be, get to that in a second. So what does this look like if you're trying to like kind of capture it on paper? Again, um, we can create a workout card where you have um, some choices and you just have them record this and you, you could follow this over time in a Google Doc. 
where um, you just you can give them a menu of different exercises. Uh, you can give them a workout of the day. You can have them find out on their own what um, hmm. what they could plug in to these different categories. And so what we have here is the you know the the different movements, and then these categories would be. WT would be weight and rep. If they have access to how much something weighs at home, if they have to be creative, then put it on there. If it's body weight, I always just write me and then the number of reps underneath just to have a record of what this is. Okay. You know, if they have like, if they're trying to guess with, um, like some, some of these kids will probably have like dumbbells. Maybe some of them will have a medicine ball or two. You know the weights of those things. I personally have been using stones in my backyard. Cause I don't have anything at home. So I've, I've been loading up my backpack full of rocks and trying to create resistance that way. Hmm. So you can keep track of that. You know, if, if I was keeping a workout card for myself, I might say like five stones in my bag or something like that to keep track. So I know where I'm improving and where I'm not, I just haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, so, but here's one way where you can make your workout cards. Um, one way you can design them if you want to help, um, help your athletes keep track. Okay. Um, so being creative, this is, this is what I started to talk about in the last two slides. When in doubt, sprinting and jumping is all you need. Um, I, I follow the strength and conditioning coach, Mike Boyle, on social media. He's out of Boston, if you don't know who he is. He got his start with Boston University as their head strength coach, and he did a lot of really cool things with their hockey team. It's a, still a dominant college hockey program, and now he's got his own facility in, in, uh, just outside Boston. And he's been working with the Red Sox, the Bruins, um, hmm. he still works at Boston university hockey. I mean, he's the top of the field and his, you know, these are sort of his golden rules that I'm following, but he said, when in doubt sprint and jump. And when you sprint, you got to <laughs> recover. So you sprint and then you walk to recover. So he emphasizes quality of movement over quantity. So we don't want to pull hamstrings. We don't want to overwork anybody, but, um, you know, best explosive exercise you can do is, is to sprint short distances, especially since soccer is a game of sprinting. Yes. Um, so here's some principles to, to, to consider when assigning sprinting and jumping. And, and, you know, I'd say virtual races could be really good. We, you can, mm. you could definitely have a, a, you know, this is a $7 on Amazon prime Casio stopwatch. So <laughs> if, um, if any of my old teammates wanted to do some virtual races, they could send me set up their, their phone or have somebody film them run a 20 yard sprint or a 20, 20 by 20 shuttle and time it and send, send me the video. I could time it for him and um, I could do the same. We could have a virtual race. I'd say no matter what the age group, everybody likes a good race. Yes. I still like race, my friends um, <laughs> back to the resistance training uh, to simulate um, to simulate lifting. Of, of any kind. Like I said, I've been filling a backpack with rocks from my backyard. I've been finding heavy stones to throw. Um, you can do a scoop throw, which is kind of like, it looks like a granny shot in basketball where you take a big stone, put it between mm. your legs, throw it as high as you can. Um, find a good place for it to land. Some parents might not love if that's tearing up the yard yeah. uh, or on the pavement, but you could find a good spot for it. <laughs> um, I found a dirt patch where it works. Um, there's, I found a bunch of heavy buckets full of paint and uh, drywall chemical stuff that I've been carrying around, like a farmer's, a farmer's walk. And um, you can also do deadlifts with that. Uh, I've also found big, heavy logs to carry around to do presses with. You know, you could do like a military press with that sort of thing or anything mm -hmm. at all with a handle to do a press or a pull. Um, I've been using chairs to stand up and do single leg box squats or um, a variation of not quite a pistol squat. I don't love pistol squats, but right, if you right. stand up on a chair and let your, if you got the one foot up on the chair and you let the other one drop, you can get a, a real deep single leg squat, which is a really difficult exercise. So you can build, you can build muscle mass doing that. Stay really fit. Third principle, be safe. Um, yes. You don't want to be throwing these rocks around when there's siblings or pets in the yard. Uh, <laughs> Or even, you know, be, be careful, encourage your athletes to be careful about their own safety. So I, I, can't, I can't promote this responsibly without talking about safety, too. Yep. So practice social distancing here, too. Yeah? Sorry. That's right. That's right. Sorry. That's, That's a bad joke. It's um, a good one. Okay. Uh, we got a few minutes here, uh, Doc. So let's, uh, 
see if we can wrap it up here if we don't mind. And then, yeah. by the way, for those that I'm going to put my email in the chat box, and for those that want this presentation, um, uh, email me. I'll give you the PDF version of it, and um, we'll go from there. I, I could maybe I could put Doc's Fritz. Can I just put yours in there? Yeah. So this, the the last slide here has okay. um, has my Butler email on there. It has your email on there too? So I um, just gave it to everybody. So your that's Gmail. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's going back. So then here's just I wanted to give a resources page and then open it up for questions if anybody has questions. Yeah. These are all hyperlinked here if, if you're interested in checking out more videos and fun stuff to help you be creative. Yeah. So Mike Boyle said, what, train slow, play slow, train fast, play fast, right? That's that was right. kind of That's his right. motto. You train okay. slow, you run slow or play slow. And if you train fast, and you're going to run fast and play fast. Very good. So that um, three-mile run is out. Oh, heck yeah. Well, for me, definitely. <laughs> um, so if anyone has maybe a question or two, We've already gone a, gone over time, and I apologize, but I, for me, this is just wonderful stuff. And he's he's um, he's truly exceptional with the material he presents and the way he presents it and everything. And um, anyway, he's he's more than happy to hang around for a minute or two, and then if not, um, uh, e you can email Fritz, or you can definitely email me for those that have my email, and I'll send you some you know the, the resource as well. So. Um, it doesn't look like there's, there are, there are many, uh, questions left, a lot of good compliments, by the way, tons of compliments. And again, I just want to say thank you, uh, Fritz for coming on, um, for taking time away you know, from your best team and, uh, you know, which is Molly, <laughs> your, your, uh, your better half now. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. Thank how long, you. how long you've been married now? Uh, two weeks. Oh, okay. You bet. <laughs> so you got to know that at the top of your head. <laughs> Um, okay. but, uh, no, so thank you all very much. And tomorrow for whatever it's worth, I'm going to show how to do, I'm going to do two 15 minute webinars on how to create your own app using glide apps. So maybe you can, for example, take some of the ideas that Fritz showed and you can make that into an app that kids can use. So anyway, thank you so much, Fritz. And, uh, I owe you. Awesome. Right, man, I owe you just to everybody who's out there. Keep tuning into Vince. He's the best. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, coach. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Talk soon. See you. Bye.